If we approximate a function by its Taylor series, we do not want to compute all the infinitely many terms, of course. We would like to use a Taylor polynomial with hopefully not too many terms. But how do we know how many terms we have to use? Well, we can do some trial and error and hope for the best, of course, but fortunately we can do better. In this video you will learn Taylor's inequality, which will tell you how big the part is you are neglecting, so you can use it to find out how many terms you need to stay within a prescribed tolerance of your error. So first let us define the remainder. The remainder is just what, well, what remains, the difference between f of x and its nth order Taylor polynomial. So for example, if you have f of x plus the exponential function a equals zero, you know the second order Taylor polynomial, one plus x plus x squared over two, so the remainder would be this ugly expression over here. Now, you are never going to compute those remainders. What we are going to do is to estimate how big they are and try to, get, uh, to, to show that they go to zero if n goes to infinity. That's the idea of those remainders. First, a small theorem that says if your remainder goes to zero uh, in some range, so a is the center, and uh, range of uh, uh, in, in the range where x is between a plus r and a minus r. So if the remainder goes to zero in that range, uh, then your Taylor polynomial equals your function f of x. Ah, that's really nice. So the, the, the Taylor series limit n, limit n to infinity in that case will equal a function. Well, why is that? Well, we can, uh, from this equation here, we can solve for the tn. So the tn of x equals f of x minus the rn of x. Then we can limits, take limits. And now those two limits over here can ex uh, do exist. f of x does not, does not contain the n, so that limit is fine. And we have assumed that the other limit here exists. So that's why we can split them up into two parts. We get f of x minus this limit of the remainder which we assume going to goes to zero. So limit capital N to infinity n of x equals L of x. So our Taylor series will be equal to our function. So that's nice. If you have an expression for our remainder and if you can show that it goes to zero, then we know that our function will be equal to our Taylor series. But, well, second theorem is more important. It tells us something about how we can estimate the remainder. Well, let's say it goes as follows. If you know that your n derivative is smaller than some value capital N. So you have to know somehow that your function is not uh, behaving too erratically. The n derivative has to be bounded by some value capital N in uh, your uh, in the prescribed domain. Then you, you know something about your remainder. It's smaller equal than capital M, so that has to be some finite value. Uh, divided, and this is nice, divided by n plus 1 factorial times this power over here. And this m plus 1 factorial is going to be very big very soon. So this is a really nice inequality because uh, the rn of x uh, will be very small if your n is already 10 or something like that. Let's see why this is true. Let's do the proof. Only for capital N equals 1, for capital N equals 2 and 3, etc. It goes exactly the same. You just have to do a few more integration steps. So we will do the n equals 1 proof. The assumption is that your f double smaller equal than capital M. We will do only the plus case, uh, the, minor, uh, the, uh, the, the, the case, uh, the, the other case go goes the same way. Then we integrate uh, left and right from A to S with respect to T, F double. So integral on the right hand side is easy because it's a constant, so it's just M times the length of the integration inter uh, interval. And here we integrate with respect to T, so we get f prime in the upper boundary minus f prime in the lower boundary, where s is some value uh, in the interval x minus a absolute smaller than d. Then we integrate again, but now with respect to s uh, from a to x on the uh, left hand side, so also on the right hand side. Now we have to be slightly more careful on the right hand side. So this will give us uh, s is over here. So this will, will give us an m times half times s minus a squared, lower boundary drops out, and here upper boundary gives me a half times m times x minus a squared. And here we integrate with respect to s, 
the f of a is a constant, so that's nice. Gives us just uh, the f prime of a times x minus a. And on the upper boundary, we integrate f prime of s with respect to s, so we get f of x minus f of a. And what do we have in the end? Well, this expression over here is exactly f of x minus f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So that's exactly uh, the, uh, the, the first part of the uh, Taylor polynomial. And here we have this one half m minus m times x minus a squared. So uh, this expression over here is exactly the R2, the f minus t1. And it, uh, on the right it says that it's smaller than one half m times x minus a squared. And that is exactly this expression over here with capital M equals 1. So there you have it for capital N equals 1. If you want to do it for higher N, then you have those to do those integration substitutes more often. It's a bit more cumbersome, but it's, it's the same idea. So now we have a very nice result because we know uh, the how big the error is if you don't use a full Taylor series. But if you just use a few terms, if you use a Taylor polynomial, to approximate a function 